You know life has taken a horrible turn for the worse when a kidnapped teenager has a better shot at survival in the hands of her psychotic murderous father who just got done killing her mother than in the hands of the San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies who were sent to rescue this girl. Apparently, in a wholehearted effort to hide what really happened over a year and a half ago, those in charge of the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department withheld law enforcement footage of the moment a gang of California Thin Blue Line members fatally shot and killed an unarmed 15-year-old girl. On September 22, 2022, San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies were searching for Savannah Graziano, who they feared was abducted by her father, Anthony, after he had fatally shot her mother the day before. Deputies cornered Anthony Graziano's vehicle on the side of a freeway in Hesperia, about 80 miles east of Los Angeles. When Savannah exited the vehicle, they opened fire and killed her. The shooting sparked national outrage and a demand that all camera footage be released to the public. And of course, they wouldn't do that. But here's how they did report the incident on the day it happened. There is a pursuit, a gun battle as they are going down the freeway that ends up right where I'm standing. Let me step out of the way off of the main street uh, exit here off of the I-15. Now, as the vehicle stops, they're telling us that someone wearing tactical gear runs out of the vehicle at the officers. That person goes down. Officers move in. It turns out that that person is a 15-year-old girl. Inside the vehicle in the driver's seat is her father. He is dead. They're both dead. And they're still trying to figure it out. But here's what we can show you so far. The sound of gunfire from drivers on the I-15 as San Bernardino County Sheriff deputies pursue an Amber Alert suspect driving a white Nissan in Barstow. But it was just going pop, 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 pop. I definitely heard the gunshots. Very scary situation. Inside the Nissan, 45-year-old Anthony Graziano, suspect in the shooting death of his wife and abduction of his 15-year-old daughter, Savannah, in Fontana. They were going fast and gunshots after gunshots after gunshots. And the gunshots were going while they were driving? Yep. There was other people on the freeway. I pulled over. I was like, oh, Lord. Yeah, it was scary. The Nissan coming to a stop on the main street off-ramp in Hesperia. Windows shattered, clips and ammunition littered on the ground. Here's what sheriffs are saying. During that firefight, the suspect vehicle comes to rest, at which time a subject exits the passenger side of the vehicle wearing tactical gear. That subject starts to run towards sheriff's deputies and during the gunfire goes down. Sheriff's deputies immediately go to clear the vehicle. We believe that both the suspect in the vehicle and the person that's contacted with the tactical gear, that that person is our 15-year-old juvenile, uh, Savannah. The suspect, we believe, is Graciano in the driver's seat of the car. But as the deputies go up and render medical aid and realize that this is Savannah in the tactical gear, they immediately transport her to an area, a local area hospital. At 11.52 hours, Savannah is pronounced deceased. Knowing the public wouldn't have access to the law enforcement footage, listen to the information Fontana police fed the local news. Fontana police reveal a nearby ring doorbell camera shows Savannah was already in the truck with her father when he allegedly murdered her mother. This new revelation at the heels of another one this evening. The 15-year-old, who was wearing tactical gear, fired shots during the gun battle that ultimately took her life and her father's. And what some could describe as an effort to cover their tracks for murdering a child, the cops had the audacity to initially claim that 15-year-old Savannah was tacked out and firing shots at the cops. Listen to Sheriff Shannon Dykus. Based on the information, evidence suggests that Savannah Graciano was a participant in shooting at our deputies. Now, the way his lawyers crafted that script, now the way his lawyers crafted that script gives him and the department plenty of plausible deniability breathing room. But there doesn't appear to be the slightest bit of evidence to suggest anything like what the sheriff actually said. 
As you can see here, Savannah steps out of the passenger side of the vehicle with what appears to be a helmet on her head. She takes a couple of steps, crouches down amidst gunfire and plumes of dust on the ground, and she takes five or six steps toward the cop who's encouraging her to proceed and is then gunned down. Now, we're not going to show you any of this here, but we will leave a link in the description. But here's a recording of the incident. Passenger, get out! Passenger, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Passenger, get out! Get out! Yeah, except that she was far from okay. As you can imagine, this sparked national outrage with people rightly asking how in the world cops wound up killing the very person they were tasked with rescuing. And we all know that it's assumed by most people that when an official gives a press briefing, they're telling the truth. Maybe we should rethink that. Sheriff's officials on that day following the shooting claimed that it was unclear whether Savannah was shot by deputies or her father. And they said deputies didn't realize it was her when she got out of the car. The other story is that she came out heavily protected and armed and that she was shooting at officers. And then for over a year and a half, they refused to release the footage of the shooting so that we could verify for ourselves what happened. But on Friday, the department disclosed nearly a dozen video files to the independent journalist Joey Scott, who filed records requests 18 months prior. The clips, contrary to initial police and news reports, showed deputies shooting at Savannah as she followed their instructions to move toward them. The video also suggests that deputies shot her after two officers, one in the helicopter and one on the ground, remarked that it was the girl who exited. The footage and the sheriff's narration of the video further make clear that she was killed by deputies and not her father. So everything the cops told the news was a lie. And everything the news told the people was misinformation based on those lies. By the way, this is the same sheriff's department who recently killed 15-year-old autistic teenager Ryan Gaynor, who was running at police with a garden tool after family members called 911 for a domestic dispute. This is also the same department that was just recently recorded punching and kicking a handcuffed man in the head while he lay helpless on the ground. See, the startling thing about all this is that this seems to be an epidemic around the country and things don't look like they're getting any better. As bad as being kidnapped is, and as bad as domestic violence and other crimes and other emergency situations are, the only thing that can make a situation even more dangerous, and it's sad to say this, is the addition of law enforcement. Leave your thoughts about this for the world and the global thought police in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my email list through my website, highimpactflix.com. That's highimpactflix.com. If you want to support the channel further, grab a hard-hitting conversation starting design. You can put on a shirt, hoodie, mug, hat, cell phone case, pillowcase, whatever you want. Become a channel member, but more importantly, know what your rights are. Always record the police and always stand for your rights. If you don't exercise your rights, you will lose them. I'll see you in the next video.